good morning or good evening whenever you're watching uh, this video. Uh, it's great that you can join us uh, on this Wednesday uh, to, as we look uh, at 1 John 3 together. Uh, and as we come uh, to this passage, I just wonder if you ever feel a bit like you don't belong uh, in this world or you just think, oh, do you know what, I just don't fit in. Maybe you've been to a party or a gathering or maybe in a work situation or, or a situation with just a, a group socially. You just think, oh, I just don't feel like I fit in here. Just what I think or what I want to do just doesn't fit in with the people around me. I just feel like I'm, I'm an odd bod um, and I belong somewhere else. And this, this passage talks a bit about kind of how, how we as Christians might feel like that in this world. You know, we... We are saved and, and made for somewhere greater, for heaven, for eternity. Because we are, when we, meet, we are Christians and we're true believers, we are children of God, children of light, and we, our real home, our true home, it is in heaven with our Father. So we can feel a bit like we don't fit in, just we feel at odds with, with the world or places and the situations around us. But there is a purpose for being in the world, but maybe not particularly of it, uh, in a sense of aligning ourselves with everything that goes on in the world. But let me pray and let us get into this passage uh, together, guys. Father, I thank you so much for your word. I thank you so much that we um, have encouragement of your living word that speaks to us day after day. Um, Lord, your word stays the same, but what you teach us and what you bring to us by your Holy Spirit as we read your word... It is new and is different, uh, and that's so encouraging, uh, Lord. And just reminding us of things that we maybe already know, but just reminding us again and refreshing our, our knowledge and our, our love for you and encouraging us, um, and, and also just bringing us to a place of worship before you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all that you teach us and how you show yourself to us through it. And just please, Lord, speak to us now through this passage, I pray in your name. Amen. Amen, guys. So uh, I'm, I'm going to mainly focus on the first 10 verses of 1 John chapter 3, um, but I will dip into the other half and speak about the other half as well. So I'm going to be reading in the English Standard Version, the ESV version of the Bible. Uh, you can follow along with me in whatever version you have. Um, let's go. Verse 1 it says, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world uh, does not know us is that it did not know him so the world doesn't really know Jesus the world as we know from uh, the Easter story rejected Jesus verse 2 beloved we are God's children now and what we will be has not yet appeared but we know that when he appears we should be like him because we shall see him as he is so basically at, at the end when Jesus comes again and judgment happens uh, and we are saved by his grace and, and the, uh, his perfect righteousness and eternity uh, will be where we will, those who believe will, will go and will remain. Verse 3, and everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. So if we're truly in Christ, we're going to be desiring to become more like him, more pure. Verse 4, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practices lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him keeps on sinning. No one who keeps on sinning has either seen him or known him. So basically this is saying, it's not saying that when you're a Christian that you're going to be perfect and you're never going to sin again, because that's not, that's not going to be true, that's not going to happen. That's what we certainly want. We don't want to sin. We want to, if we're truly Christians, truly believers, as children of God, we should hate sin and want to flee from it and just are disgusted almost with ourselves for it. Uh, and, uh, but, and it brings us to a place of like repentance and um, as repentance before God uh, and asking for his forgiveness, but feeling blessed and feeling assured and knowing that his grace and his mercy is enough to save us uh, and to pay the price, the penalty for, uh, for our sin and to also um, take you know, realize that he took the wrath of God that was meant for us on himself. But what it means is that when we are yeah, true believers, we're, we're wanting to 
you know, when we when we do sin, it's not something we want to make a practice of. It's not something we want to live in, or we try to justify and say, oh, it's okay, oh, uh, because of this, oh, it's all right to just tell that little lie there, or oh, it's okay to to take that, you know, it's just going to waste anyway, or oh, it's it's okay to to have these thoughts because they're not a very nice person, you know, that's that's not what not what true believers would do. True believers are those that, even though we sin, we we desire to be more like Christ and we. We work hard at, at, by the power of the Holy Spirit at becoming more like Christ and, and to putting away more of sin and his temptations. And we, we make a practice of wanting to live in a holy life, a life pleasing to God, rather than making a practice of and having a desire to almost live a life that is aligned with the world and sin. And that's why we kind of, as children of God, we're at odds with the world uh, because the world tells you, do what you want, live for yourself, live selfishly. Whatever you think is right is right most in most aspects of life but that's completely different um, to uh, the life that we are called to live verse 7 little children let no one deceive you whoever practices righteousness is righteous as he is righteous whoever makes practice of sinning is of the devil for the devil has been sinning from the beginning the reason of the reason the son of god appeared was to destroy the works of the devil no one born of god makes a practice of sinning for God's seed abides in him and he cannot keep on sinning because he has been born of God. So basically, it's shown by how you live your life, um, whether you are a true believer or not, um, from the examples that I gave before. Verse 10, by this it is evident who are the children of God and who are the children of the devil. Whoever does not practice righteousness, whoever, so basically whoever is not desiring to try and live like Jesus and follow God's ways, and seek to be selfless and loving one another and loving God. Um, they are they are not they are basically children of the devil. And on the flip side, if we are seeking to be living for Christ, loving uh, one another, and seeking to live a, a, a holy life, a life that is pleasing and honourable uh, to God and to, uh, to following Christ, uh, then we are children of righteousness who are not saved by these works, not saved by how we act, but that's like proof, as James talks about, uh, of our faith. And your faith is like, it's like it's backed up with the works that we do and how we live our lives. And that's what true children of God are. Sorry, I didn't finish on verse 10. So whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he one who does um, not love his brother. And that kind of links into the rest of the chapter, talks about loving one another. Uh, and, and I just want to pick out verse 18 from that says little children let us not love in word or talk but in deed and in truth so sometimes we, we can say all the right things we can we can yes i guess talk the talk say it, or we just read out scripture and as if we know it but if we don't actually live it in our deeds and in how we honestly live our lives you know that that word truth that makes me think about the things we can hide from people you know in your mind in your heart at those kind of nasty thoughts we have for others or that that um that lustfulness or that hate on others or that jealousy on others you know they those things are what god sees even if other people don't yeah so we are called to live a life that our faith is shown in how we act in, in how we love one another how we love god and how we seek to live a life that is pleasing to him not just in what we just say or what we might think um, are just the words that people want to hear to make us seem like we're children of God. It's there's there's, there's proof in the pudding as it's as the as the phrase goes. Um, and that that's my challenge to us guys. You know, if you truly are children of God, uh, well, you can you can test that yourself by by the way that you seek to live your life. No one's perfect at all. We're all going to sin, um, but it's how you choose to live your life and are you seeking to practice a life of holiness and of loving one another, as the second part of this chapter says. Um, and loving God uh, and being honouring to him uh, or are you quite happy with justifying the, the bits of evil and sin that you want to get away with so guys let me challenge you we need to live as children of God uh, and we need to support each other in that as well giving love and grace to one another um, but being willing to, to challenge one another uh, and to, to help them uh, each other along the way too Father, I thank you that we are children of God, that when we uh, believe in you and we are truly saved, Lord Jesus, and, and desire to seek your transformation in our lives, God, that we can be certain of eternity, certain of uh, our earthly home being secure, um, 
with you, Lord God. But Father, we recognise that we're in a fallen world where you have placed us to be light, um, to, to, to show your love, uh, Father. But we need your help in that. We need your help to, to have this life that is seeking after holiness and righteousness rather than um, sin and evil and, and the schemes of the world and of um, the enemy. So Lord, would you help us by our strength, unite us in that love uh, as children of God, as brothers and sisters together, help us to live um, in the way that we act and the way that we think uh, and the, the way that we, the desires that we have in our heart, Father, that they'll be honouring to you and to one another uh, so that we might make a great difference in this world for your, for your sake, Lord Jesus. Uh, but just thank you so much that we are saved. Thank you for that we are called children of you, Lord. That's just an amazing phrase, children of God. Praise you and thank you um, right now in your name. Amen. Amen, guys. Thanks for joining us. Um, tune in tomorrow and to hear from 1 John 4. Have a great day. God bless.